issues that they're dealing with and the uh, board will be uh, going to uh, take a look at what their next step is. Can you talk about options that are emerging? Oh, uh, certainly, uh, in, in the fullness of our discussion, we talked about a, a lot of uh, potential things that could be done and how they could do them. And uh, also, in terms of uh, what, if any, uh, role of the uh, minister would have in that process. Whittling the list down in any way? Uh, that wasn't, uh, I, I didn't take that as my role to whittle their list down. I think that they need to deal with their constituents uh, in terms of uh, what will be a satisfactory approach to providing education. And uh, I think that needs to be a, a real discussion with the people involved. It's not really in my hand to, uh, to uh, mandate that, but I think it was in my hand to, uh, to talk with the board about what those responsibilities and options are. About build a school for one student. Um, you know, you have to do what's practical, what's reasonable in the circumstances, and uh, they will have a discussion with uh, with the constituents involved, and and come to a reasonable conclusion. Yeah, remember that we wouldn't make it feasible to build that school. I think that's asking for a, a lot of speculation. And, you know, people are looking for both short-term and perhaps medium and long-term uh, solutions to the issue. And I think uh, we've got uh, we've got elected representatives in the, in the area who have an obligation to work with their communities, and uh, they're, they're they're willing and able to do that. And uh, and uh, I need to leave it up to them now to uh, to uh, to do that. Have you set out a timeline for some sort of a solution to be found? Uh, I didn't do anything arbitrary. We had a very very good discussion. And I offered to be available if I could be of assistance. What's the message to the parents today, the parents who are calling for secular education in Warrenville? What would you tell them about what's happened today and what they should expect going forward? I think the, I think the reasonable expectation would be to, uh, to sit down with them and to, uh, to talk about what uh, needs to be done in order to accomplish uh, their goals. Haven't they tried to do that? Uh, well, I think Here we are at the legislature and the ministers have to go. I think the board is, uh, is uh, empowered to, uh, to provide education in that area and they understand their, their role and responsibility and uh, uh, they will want to work with uh, with their constituents and the corollary is also true, the constituents need to work with their board. Has there been an emphasis placed on whether or not a solution will be found that is community based in the sense that uh, a solution that is found is one that won't necessarily have to send students out of their community for education? The board has to look at, at whatever viable options there are and, uh, and work with the individuals involved with respect to which uh, options are viable. Uh, there's all sorts of students that go into and out of that community and other communities for educational programming based on, uh, uh, on, on choice, on, uh, uh, on the practicality of how you put programs together. Uh, and and it's, it's, I mean, there are students that leave that community every day to go to school. There are students who come to that community every day to go to school. So all of those are, are options, and I think that's why it's very important we have locally elected boards to deal with locally elected program delivery and uh, to ensure that, that, that uh, educational options are available and that people's uh, rights are, are uh, met. But at a time when you yourself have said boards are going to have to tighten their belts and so some teachers are going to have to be laid off, I mean, is it realistic that you know, a small area like this will get another school board? <laughs> I mean, I mean, another school board? No. Uh, nobody's talking about building another school. I mean, school programming happens in all sorts of ways, shapes, and forms. This isn't about a building. It's about people. It's about rights. And it's about, uh, first of all, uh, everybody coming together to put their children first and understand how we can get uh, each child the type of education, uh, the type of education program they need. Is it your anticipation that this issue will be resolved before the beginning of the school year? Do you have a drop dead date on this? I anticipate the board will want to have it resolved uh, with the parents, and the parents will want to have it resolved with the board uh, in time for uh, for the next school year. What about you? Do you want to resolve that quickly? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the, the longer these issues hang out there, the more uh, the more concerns and the more uh, uh, the more they 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 develop into something that, that nobody ever intended. So I think it behooves the board and the indiv individuals involved to meet um, early. Uh, to work together collaboratively and to come up with a solution which is in the best interest of the children. Just a flyer here, if that doesn't happen, will you fire them? I don't deal in, uh, in speculation and, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's uh, suffice to say that, that the minister doesn't have a lot of uh, really light options. We had school board and municipal elections 
Did you hear about this back then? And if you didn't, should you have? Uh, I don't know. I didn't. I don't think I heard of it before the election. I'm not sure it was an election uh, issue in that area. Uh, if it was, there would have been ways that the people would have dealt with it as part of the election. That seems to be that. Uh, right, I had to go back and check dates on that. It seems to be something that came up after the election. And um, go ahead. The, well, it was an election issue. It was brought up. Uh, forms in the town, but I mean, this issue has existed, this anomaly, as you've called it, has existed, so uh, should it have been incumbent on the parents to bring this up, or, or, or should someone else have, have addressed the fact that there was only Catholic education in Warrenville for all of these years? As long as, as long as the parents are happy with their educational choice, why would somebody interfere with it? I mean, Greater St. Albert Catholic has been a good, uh, and is a, a good Education jurisdiction and the very fact that they that this uh, situation has existed for as long as it has indicates that uh, the parents uh, for the most part are, are happy with the educational choices they have. If they have, one presumes that they would step forward. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's incumbent for people to go around fixing all sorts of things that aren't broken. Uh, but, but there are, you know, people have rights, and when they uh, step forward and say, "I would like to have my rights respected," and and I don't want it this way, then it's incumbent on the, the board, which is elected to serve that area, to sit down with them and work that out. And it's incumbent on the Minister of Education to take an interest. Um, but no, we don't go around fixing all the things. I mean, I, I don't. it's not my job to go around the province and say, you've got some rights, maybe you're not exerting them. Would you like to exert them today? Uh, that, that's not the way our democratic system works. We, we elect school boards. The school board was elected last fall. Anybody who didn't agree with the direction it was taking could have run for the board, could have raised it as an issue. You said they, they did raise it as an issue. I'm not uh, sure how or where, but because I wasn't involved in that. But, you know, that's the way our democratic process works. But when people do raise their issues, then they have to be responded to and they have to be dealt with.